Rev up your engine! Now, people often ask me about Mustangs as a used car. Here's a perfect example. This is a 2000 Mustang GT. My customer bought it 10 years ago when it was already 10 years old and he paid $5,000. Now, considering this car was originally $21,000, he bought it when it was 10 years old for $5,000. 10 years after that, he's still driving it. Doesn't seem like a bad deal to me. Decent shape. Now you can see this side, the headlights all fogged in. Well, you can't blame Ford on that. Now, those aren't the original ones. The original ones faded too. But unfortunately, the customer bought a cheap Chinese made replacement one. And after a couple of years, look at the crap. Look how it faded. That's why you don't want to buy really cheap crap. Now, as I said before, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Check out the Matrix, okay? These are six years old and they're from China. And they still look good. Strangely enough, these were only 49 bucks a piece. But on my wife's Lexus, these are also six years old. And you can see. They're starting to fade. And these were $269 for repair. They were both made in China. Turns out the cheap ones actually work better than the more expensive ones. So you never know with aftermarket stuff. So if you are looking at aftermarket headlight assemblies, don't be lazy like me. I just looked around, bought it on Amazon, away I went. Do a little research, see what people say. How long does it last? Do they fade? Do they not fade? Then you went on up with a funky one like this. And we look at the rest of the car. Hey, the Ford fancy rims, they're still in decent shape. The paint's not bad. Here, though, it's faded off. That's the problem when you start using aluminum stuff. The aluminum, the paint sometimes doesn't stick as good. But you can fix that if you want. You can see it's still a very straight vehicle. We check out the trunk. Mustangs are never known for giant trunks, but there's some room in here. You know, it still goes. And typical the hydraulics, they're not holding it too well. <laughs> well, they are 20 years old after all. You can get a stick or buy new ones if you wanted to. Because let's face it, what people buy Mustangs for are the V8 engines under the hood. This one's got about 160,000 on it now. It's an excellent pony engine. Doesn't really burn any oil. Still got tons of power. Now this isn't the racing version, it's the 4.6. It puts out 260 horsepower. If you would have got the bigger V8, it puts out 385 horsepower. Because that's got the double overhead cam engine instead of the single. Puts out a lot more horsepower. But this engine still works really well with about 150,000 miles. And as we look inside, you can see, look, with the smaller engine, there's lots of working room. You want to mess around with it? There's room to work. No cramped quarters. Now the transmission is a four-speed automatic with overdrive, the A-O-D-E. Ford used that transmission for a long time. I mean, a lot of guys, they want to get the standard transmissions, do burnouts and stuff in them. But for regular driving, these four-speed overdrive automatic transmissions can last a really long time. We'll take this for a spin and show you. And consider this thing's got about 150,000 miles on it. We'll start her up. Starts right up. Got a nice little rumble. And the AC, still freezing cold. No, it's a Mustang, so it's a reasonably bumpy ride. But well, we'll see if it's got any guts left. Come to a stop, and we'll floor it. It's still spinning those tires, and it shifts like a dream still. And the brakes work good too. And for a relatively old fashioned design, it still handles quite well. You go around the road, you feel pretty comfortable cornering in these things. You can handle the power of the engine. All in all, you feel pretty secure driving this thing around. And like I say, yeah, it's a Mustang. You feel the bumps, but it still handles quite well. All in all, a pretty fun driving experience, even though it's 20 years old. And sure, the dash shows its age. It's got an aftermarket Sony in it. It's a pretty basic car, but this is for driving around in. I'm sure it's old and the seat's wearing out. Good do with a new driver's seat. You can see most of these, it's always the driver's seat. Hardly anybody ever sits on the back. Got a little bit of room, but not for people with long legs, that's for sure. No, when you consider my customer paid five grand for this thing and he's still driving it around and he hasn't touched the engine or the transmission or the AC, not a bad deal, really. And sure, he got the smaller engine. It doesn't have the 385 horsepower, but you saw as it took off, it's still plenty quick with this V8 engine. And the single overhead cam engine is pretty much indestructible. It can last for hundreds of thousands of miles 
as long as you keep clean oil in them and don't overheat them. Because realize, this isn't a dinosaur design like in the Corvettes that are still using pushrod engines. This is an overhead cam engine after all. So it's better than a pushrod engine when it comes to horsepower for its size. It's just that the bigger V8 in that year was a double overhead cam V8 with a lot more horsepower. But from my experience, the less horsepower in a sports car, if you're buying it used, often the better. Guys that drive like absolute maniacs, they demand the 385 horsepower engine. They're not happy with 265. So most of them are gonna buy the bigger engine. You find the smaller V8, it's still a V8 with lots of power and torque, but it's generally gonna be in a lot better shape. And considering what good shape it's still in mechanically, and he's had it for 10 years, and he only paid $5,000 for it, I'd say you got a pretty good deal on this one. It is a classic rear wheel drive Mustang. A lot of guys like them with drifting. Of course, they want a standard transmission and they want the bigger V8, but classic Mustang. It's made in Detroit, made in the USA. And hey, it does have a decent sunroof on it. If you notice, unlike older Fords, this is not a rust bucket. It is not rusted out. Much better anti-rust coating than they used to have. My father had a 1953 two-tone, three on the speed. It was the first car we had that went more than 100 miles an hour, but it just rusted away. It had practically no anti-rust capabilities to it. And the seats, the back seats, you could watch the road go under your feet. You had to keep your feet up in the air. These, no, they're not rust buckets like the old ones were. If you're looking at an old 60s Mustang, you better check it out for frame rust and rust overall before you put any money down on those old things. Because they'll rust like mad unless they lived in Texas or Arizona or New Mexico. Those you have to really check out. But these more modern ones, they had much better anti-rust corrosion stuff on them than the really old Mustangs did. The really old ones might be cool, but if it's rotted away, it's worth nothing. He got his $5,000 worth and it would look better cosmetically but he got married and had kids and he doesn't keep it up like he used to but he said he's working on that now. But I've heard that a bunch of times in the past. Who knows how it's gonna happen. But the car's still keeping itself down the road. It's still working fine. And here's some bonus questions and answers. William Cump says, what do you think of the Quad 4 GM engine? I see tons of those things blowing up. Sorry, my tanko, Scott. He's going to say it's another piece of crap GM. Well, not the absolute greatest design, but the main reason those quads fail is because users don't maintain them. They don't change the oil enough. And a lot of them believe this crap that you can change your oil every 10,000 miles. And those engines, they're overstressed because their little four-cylinder engine puts out a lot of horsepower. Then the engines blow up because the oil's dirty and they don't get correct lubrication. A lot of the failure of those quad engines basically is people not changing the oil, not maintaining the things correctly. And I mean, I know that as a fact because I worked on a bunch of them. And I have seen a bunch of them blow up. And I do have to say, most of them were people that did not maintain the car correctly and that's why they blew up. They weren't the greatest design. I mean, they're nothing like a Toyota four-cylinder engine, but for their size, they put out a lot of power, and if you change the oil enough, they were decent engines. Trash Cavalier Man says, Scotty, why do you say the Toyota Echo was a really cheap car? My old one Echo has not 794,000 miles. Thanks. I didn't say they didn't last. I just said they were cheap cars. <laughs> they rattle and bump and go. I mean, the precursor to that was Tercel, the Toyota Tercel, right? And we mechanics called them Toyota turd cells because they were turds. But I've seen them with 500,000 miles on them. But they needed a bit reasonable amount of work, and they too rode kind of crappy. If you don't mind the poor ride that that car has, you can drive it. Hey, I saw people get 300,000 miles out of Yugos, those piece of crap Yugoslavian cars that were basically 70s Fiat molds that the Yugoslavians bought and built them in Yugoslavia. If you take care of any car and do a good job, it can last. Still doesn't mean it was the cheap car, and those were cheap cars. <laughs> they didn't cost much, and they were tinny, and they made a lot of noise, but they could still run. There's a difference between a cheap car and one that lasts a long time. I, I like a little bit more quality. Like Rather than buy something like that, I would have bought a Corolla, because they ride nicer, and they're a lot nicer cars. So, you know, you kind of get what you pay for there. Fast Study 7 says I got a 2018 Honda Accord. I hit a pothole. When I hit that giant pothole, my SAS light came on, steering angle sensor, and vehicle stability assist lights coming on. Help, all that stuff is based on sensors on the vehicle. One of the big sensors is the speed sensor for the wheel, for the anti-lock brake, and all that system. Let's say you hit the right front really hard with a pothole. I'd check that sensor first and check all the suspension parts because let's say you broke 
the end of the tie rod is now loose and it's wobbling around. I had a guy that had the same codes and when I jacked it up, pulled on the wheel, went clunk a clunk and I look on the tie rod was worn it was wobbling back and forth so I replaced the tie rod and had the front end aligned and the light went off any damage done there is going to do it so jack up where you hit it first and start there start analyzing it there maybe you'll get lucky maybe just one of the connectors got unplugged you can plug it back in but normally if you had a big enough hole you probably broke something so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos remember to ring that bell